hello and welcome back to Overbooked. I'm Amanda and today we're gonna to be talking about the book Hood of Feminism, Notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by Mickey Kindle. I read this because I absolutely wanted to. Um, it's an amazing book and I think it's a very important book to read. Um, but I also read it for, a, I used it for a prompt for one of the Reading Women Challenge prompts and that was number 23, a nonfiction focused on social justice. So I will be putting that down in the description below as well. I also wanted to say, like, I don't really want this to really be a book review because I think this book is really important and I think it was really well done. I think it was really good. I don't think there needs to, I don't know. In my opinion, I think this is just a great book that you should just read for knowledge and um, perspective. And I don't really know if it warrants a review, especially from myself being a white, you know, straight woman. Woman. Um, I don't think I have, I don't think I should be allowed to review it. Um, but I think that I just wanted to come on here and discuss my thoughts and some of the things that I got out of this book. And um, just really, I know it's been out there a lot. I know we see it all the time. I know that it's, you know, on those anti-racist reading lists and, but I just wanna put it in your face again. I think, you know, if you keep seeing something, I think it keeps prompting somebody to, like if, if you haven't picked it up yet, I hope that this prompts you to pick it up. So Hood Feminism is essentially about how the feminist movement left out a lot of issues and a lot of women in their movement and how like um, Nikki Kendall really just crafts and delivers and shows us all of the different things that we forgot about and the people we forgot about and how that kind of affects the overall movement as a whole. What I think is really just interesting is how after the 2016 election, I think a lot of us felt really devastated and really distraught. And then, you know, there was all those women marches and, um, you know, the pink pussy hats and all of that stuff. And I think a lot of us got really swept up in it and like myself included. And I didn't really think about how this time in history was gonna impact other women and not just myself. I really was only thinking about how this was gonna impact me. And that's obviously not how we should be going about it. And that's not how this movement's gonna get anywhere. And ultimately, it's gonna do less for me in the long run. That's what Mickey Kendall really talks about in here is like how <clears throat> white feminism always kind of seems to, not almost, always seems to leave a group out, leaves really important issues out, and in thinking that it doesn't affect them at all, and thinking that it's never gonna come back to circle to them. But really in the end, all of this is really connected, like. We can't really get anywhere without, you know, the other women around us, other women of color, um, and if we don't address all issues that affect all women, um, because that's just going to keep holding all of us back. So what I really liked in this book is how she has every single chapter be a different issue or topic that feminism kind of forgets about or disregards or doesn't look at as closely as they should. So like solidarity is still for wh white women, gun violence, hunger, of fast-tailed girls and freedom. So that was mainly about sexuality. Um, it's raining patriarchy, how to write about black women, pretty for a dot dot, black girls don't have eating disorders, the fetishization of fierce, the hood doesn't hate smart people, missing and murdered, fear and feminism, race, poverty and politics, education, housing, reproductive justice, eugenics and maternal mortality, parenting while marginalized, ally, allies, anger, and accomplices. So I felt like that was just a really good, those are just really good topics and things to talk about that I don't think that we really talk about in our feminist spheres. I think a lot of the times, especially as a white feminist, I just sit down and I'm like, okay, well, am I getting paid the same as my male counterparts? Like, um, you know, let's celebrate that I can vote and um, just, uh, <laughs> I'm blank blanking on every other like feminist issue that I've always talked about, but it's kind of just these things that were like, okay, well, some of these things fall through the cracks a lot, like, like gun violence. I don't think I've ever really thought about gun violence as a feminist issue, but it, it really is. 
know, I think we see gun violence as this huge topic where it's like mass shootings or domestic violence, but it also really affects marginalized communities. So how does gun violence affect those communities and how can we really make sure we're stepping up to help those communities and really thinking about that? I think another interesting thing or really important note to make when I was reading this book is that um, as a feminist, I shouldn't be sitting here like lecture lecturing um, women of color or marginalized communities on how to solve their problems, right? Like I'm not here, like I'm not reading this book and being like, oh my gosh, yes, there's so many issues that affect all women. I have to swoop in and I have to save the day and I have to help them. Like that's not like the moral of the story here. It's mainly like, okay, um, from your point of view, from your privilege, how can you be an ally and be somebody that can assist in this situation and without fixing it. Um, and I think a lot of it is just really listening to those communities, listening to what they need, because they know what they need. They're the people who are in, um, that are dealing with these issues every day. Um, so I think really taking the time to just really listen to what they need, providing um, what they need, whether that it be money or donations or resources, like that's what I think is really important for us to realize is that we're not here to, you know, tell them what the solution is or what they need to do. It's we just need to be there and ready to offer any assistance that they ask for and definitely just to lend whatever they need in that time. Um, one of my favorite chapters, and I think I talked about this a lot in my wrap up, was fear and feminism. And I think it's just this thought where like, as a feminist, I'm afraid to speak up when I see that another um, community is being marginalized or a woman of color is not being, is being affected essentially. And um, I think that we've all kind of had those conversations like during this time. Um, oh my gosh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> But I think we've all been grappling with that recently since, you know, the summer of 2020 and having those tough conversations. But I think there's a lot of us that still aren't doing that, that still aren't seeing who, um, like speaking up when we know that we should, but we're just afraid to be uncomfortable. And I think that was the main point of that chapter was like, we're just afraid to be uncomfortable so we don't address these things that could really start changing the perception of how, you know, marginalized communities or women of color are viewed and or the, how these topics that affect women of color or other marginalized communities are viewed. And I think that that's just really important to realize is how like we can't help change or do anything if we're not or saying that like, how do I say this? <laughs> we can't offer our solutions and we can't say that we're doing all we can when we're not even talking within our own communities and to our own um, people around us and we're not doing that kind of thing and I, I just I think that that was just a really important chapter too as well especially just like knowing that there's been a lot of times that I myself have you know skipped a lot of important conversations because I just didn't want to feel uncomfortable and I just was really afraid of how that conversation would go how I would be perceived how our relationship would be after that conversation and so I think that that's just another really important thing to think about is like okay, well, why are you so afraid? And if it's really, like, if you are afraid to be uncomfortable, like, that's a much smaller thing than living with um, the things that are talked about in this book. So it's kind of just something that we have to get over and um, just kind of move on and just start having those conversations. I think this is a really important book. If you consider yourself a feminist, I think, especially a white feminist, I think this is just a critical book, a necessary book for you to read. And I definitely think that this is something that I will want to reread. I think it's something that um, as things come up, I will definitely want to refer to certain chapters because um, it's just, I think, really important to keep reminding ourselves. I think that sometimes we get in a cycle of doing things and then we're like, okay, I think we just have to make really conscious efforts to keep changing because once we stop doing that, I think then we just stop evolving and changing. But, and that's why I really, I was really glad that I bought this book because that I was, I was thinking about listening to it on audio. I was thinking about just checking out from the library, but I was like, this is I think a book that I would really like to own and um, just have 
forever, <laughs> essentially. Um, to any of my friends who are watching, if you would like to borrow this book, it is, I am more than happy to lend it to you. I would like it back for the reasons I just stated, but I would love for more people to read it, so I'm happy to lend it to you. Um, so if you have not read Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall, I highly, highly recommend it. I think it's just a really important book to read um, during this time, during any time, um, whoever you are. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this book discussion. I think I'd rather call it a discussion than a review. Um, and if you did, please hit that like button and let me know if you guys have read this book and if you're planning on reading it or, um, or what you thought of it or what you, what was, what was your favorite chapter if you read it or what was your favorite thing that you got out of the book? I would just, I love, I would love to hear that. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.